Gothic Angel here, and I am so excited. I just got from my dear friend Nandia a lovely, lovely Christmas present. Yes, it arrived before Christmas, and I'm very excited, and I so hope that Alchemy gets to you before Christmas as well. Um, wow. The Wild Unknown, the first edition, and the guidebook. And this, is, this book is written and illustrated by Kim Kranz. And wow, wow! Oh, this is, oh, look at the inside. Take a good look. So it says, Welcome to the Wild Unknown Tarot. You'll find no wrongs or rights inside this box, only mirrors for reflection. Open your mind. Draw a card and have fun on your journey. I love that. And you can hear in the background, in case you're wondering, the packaging that this lovely um, trade came in is now being enjoyed by, yes, my sugar bear. All right, so we have inside this lovely fold-out. And I will say, in case anyone is watching this review, and thinking about the Wild Unknown, the second edition, um, it comes out with a different type of fold-out. I know it's a, it's a, all this long instead of being the double, the height this way, it's a longer width and it folds out that way. I quite like this, so it's done somewhat in a bit of a, an eye, and it's got up on the top left, it's got the pentacles, the bottom left, it's got the swords, and the bottom. Write the cups in the top, write the wands in um, the center. It's got, of course, the Mage Arcana. And on the other side, it actually gives all of the little cue words that uh, you would want to use for all of the, the miners. And the Majors along the side. So, really nicely done. All right, I'll put that off to the side. And I've heard enough about how sturdy this box is, and it is absolutely one of the most sturdy boxes I've, I've seen a deck come in. So with no further ado, I have been so looking for, oh, just look at those backs, gorgeous. Oh, and I love that it's got the back inside as well. Yes, I am kind of wiggling excitedly here. Thank you so much, Andrea. Oh, they are thick. They are satiny. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, yeah, the backs. I look at the hypnotic movement there when you move them around. This was one of the things I, I was a little concerned when I saw that the second edition was going to come up and, and heard that they'd have a new back. And I really didn't want not to have that back. So thank you so much for this trade. There is our fool card. And I love the check. I love the innocence there. Beautiful. I'm going to just go through all the cards, and I know lots of people have already, but I just love this deck. I love when you get that nice snap of a deck when you set it down. And I know this card has changed on the new, and that it has more colors, but I really, I love blue. It's something that I... A lot of the changes were just so minor that I, I wouldn't even, um, I don't think that you could really call them any sort of major. And, and I love this justice with the cats. <laughs> but the hermit card, um, I've been looking forward to seeing this because the hermit card, wow. <laughs> and the wheel of fortune, I just love the colorful strings. Um, with, you can see the owl up in the top there. And I, I love the style of this artwork. And, you know, it wouldn't necessarily work for any any deck, but in this deck, I think so far what I have to say is that what I am overall really impressed with, and this is pretty much of all decks that I've seen so far, um, the texture and the thickness love that death card. Oh, temperance. Oh, I mean, I've seen these, but until you're holding on to them, wow. Um, I want to take a quick check on these and see. Now, these do not have a core, but they are thick. 
And a lot of cards are not using cores when they're bigger cards and thick. The devil, that's very nice. <laughs> and take another look at the fire at his feet. This is so tongue in cheek, so beautiful. The tower being the tree, and the star. They'll probably all be my favorite by the time I'm finished going through these. The Ace of Wands. Golly, look how it pops. And look at the Two of Wands. I just love the whole chakra feeling to that. And all of the colors incorporate the chakras as well with the Three of Wands. Just beautiful. And then it's not overdone throughout the deck. So it's, you know, when it is done, it's really... Oh, you can just feel the Five of Wands. You can feel those cards just just moving. They're just so kinetic. Wow. Six of Wands. A bit of peace after the Seven of Wands. And then the Eight of Wands. And the Nine. And the Ten. And the Daughter of Wands. I really like that they use Daughter, Son, and mother, I love the use of the snake in the Son of Wands as well, and father, and you can feel um, the colors just match so well with the imagery in these cards. Absolutely incredible, and you'll know that notice that even more when we move into the the cups. Look at the colors, just spectacular. The two of cups. Having such a good time with the package, you would love that, Andrew. <laughs> Five of Cups. I love how the roots, you can just feel the roots and, and you know, the different, very healing um, colors and moving down into the earth. And the Five of Cups. <laughs> All right, and here we have the Seven of Cups. Beautiful roots. Love that. Oh, and look at the imagery with this. I mean, this just pulls you right in there. Wow. I love what they've done for the seven there. Oh, these cards are so smooth and so beautiful. I can't say enough about them. Look at the broken glass. Oh, wow. The Eight of Cups is fantastic. Oh, I haven't had a chance to really look at these, but right now all I can say is wow. And this is the Nine of Cups. Look at the color. I mean, look at the intensity of that color. Look at that. It's just fantastic. And you just feel the, the movement of this color. Wow. And the Ten of Cups. <laughs> and the Daughter of Cups. I love it. And then the reflection all in the chakra colors. Son of Cups. The beautiful lack of color in here is is actually better than I shouldn't say lack, but the minimal use of color is is really quite profound. Oh, and look at these two, the mother and the father of Cups. Wow. Wow. Oh, these are so worth the wait. If you were thinking about, and if you're on the edge with these cards, absolutely take that plunge. Wow. They're just, oh. Oh, and I didn't, you don't see this, I didn't see this in the reviews, but this is literally dripping. The red of the Three of Swords, you could just feel the wounds. <laughs> oh, look at him. <laughs> I, I mean, I had seen all these, and, and I wasn't really prepared for this. This is beautiful. 
This is a deck that I, I you know, really didn't know what to think of. Um, and it wasn't until it went out of print that I really felt, you know, maybe, oh, look at this. Oh, the Nine of Swords, wow. Just look at that. Wow, I, you don't, I didn't see this, but this is, oh, just the, I can just feel the decay and the breaking down. The Ten of Swords. Wow. Wow. I have a real thing for Buffalo. And I don't know if that's what the head is. I'll read it in the book in a bit. Oh, but I love the swords. And I love this owl. Love the owl, I should say. Daughter of Swords. And this is what I was looking forward to. Because with all the owls, they've done all of the court cards of the swords as owls. And there's my snowy owl. Oh, Mother of Swords. Oh, that is my card, I'll tell you. And the Father of Swords. Oh, with the horned owl. And the Ace of Pentacles. And now we have the new growth. And these will be a little bit more positive here. I love the infinity sign done with the two, two of Pentacles. I looked at all of these two and you know, they look, the cards look a lot um, bigger, the, the, um, the imagery doesn't stand out as much when you're just looking at the images online. <gasps> look at the petals dripping like blood. Wow. And the Five of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles. Very nice. The Seven. This is another one that I love. Absolutely phenomenal Eight of Pentacles. That's my sugar bear. Very disappointed that I'm not paying attention to him. This one, I hadn't really realized how gorgeous this was. The Nine of Pentacles. Oh, this Ten of Pentacles. Wow. Just watch how that draws you in. I could sit there doing that all day. Uh, the Daughter of Pentacles with her. Her, uh, it's a chakra rainbow. That's our pentacles. <laughs> the mother of pentacles. Oh, I love that. The colors again, gorgeous. And then look at the, the, the rack of... Yes, I see you. You want to come up here for a visit, huh? Come here. Oh, come here, baby, come here. Do you want to say hello? There you go. There. I am. I'm saying hello. <laughs> Okay, sugar bear. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, I'll pick those back up and let sugar bear go back to his attacking things. All right, so this is the deck. Beautiful. And I love these bags. I mean, I could just sit there doing this all day long. You see what I'm saying there? <laughs> And I knew already with the book that it's it's um, done in handwriting, but I'm pretty sure that's a font. At least I think it is. And you get each picture, and they don't go a lot into it. And you know, I don't think it's necessary. The cards speak so much for themselves, and if you if they don't they don't deviate really from the Rider weight idea at all. I love this. Now I'm going to go and see what they have for spreads. They basically have about a paragraph on each one. And it talks about reverse cards because you can do reversals with this. You can do reversals. This card does not include the reverse readings, which isn't an issue for me because I don't do reverse readings. I've never... I've never cared for the negativity. I think that the cards already speak themselves to the negative um, aspects of... I mean, all the cards are, are positive in the whole human learning experience, but, um, you know, your fives and sevens are definitely more negative. And it does show someone su um, shuffling, how to cut them, um, 
and how to separate into three stacks, combine into one. Talks about the card of the day. And it speaks on the last thoughts. Celtic spread, and that's the one that I'm very, very familiar with and use quite often. It says, last thoughts. If you believe your tarot cards reveal truths to you, then treat them kindly. Build a relationship with them that is respectful and spend time with them, especially at first. Look through the imagery and handle the cards daily. Keep your deck in a special spot in your house when not in use and don't leave them strewn about. If your roomie or friend wants to borrow your deck often, consider gifting them one of their own. Tarot decks respond best to one person. Be, spent, be sensitive to how you feel when you handle the cards. Try not to use them when you're angry. Allow the ritual of using them to be positive, exploratory, and even fun. I can absolutely attest to that. It's important to be in a good frame of mind. I very often sage um, the room before I do a reading just because it puts me into a very re receptive, relaxed frame of mind. And then it goes on to say... Uh, the ideal time to use the cards is when your mind feels open and clear. And if your cards are exposed to neg a negative situation or person, take some time afterwards to clear the air and reconnect with them. Like sage, shuffle the cards for a while to get lost in the imagery. Many people like to keep their deck wrapped in silk as this is believed to protect them from the forms of negativity. May your journey into the tarot be peaceful and bright. So very positive messages, very positive, very positive deck, very positive uh, and I have very positive feedback. I can only say that I love it. And thank you so much, Andrea. This has been one of the best unexpected gifts that I am getting this Christmas. So thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Or if you celebrate Yule or if you celebrate um, Hanukkah or... It, it, whatever. I hope everybody out there has a has a wonderful, wonderful season. Gothic Angel saying bye for now.